Controlling batch distillation from a pot still, at least when using my isothermal deflagmator, is fairly simple because it only requires one control parameter to be adjusted, heating power. With continuous distillation there are two parameters, heating power and wash feed rate. Fine tuning requires adjusting these parameters over time. The column in this diagram is made of 28mm copper pipe filled with spiral prismatic packing. It is a rectifying column. It measures 1500mm from the bottom where it connects to the stripping column to the product outflow. There is a thermometer festoon with temperature sensors placed every 100mm. This column will distill about 1ml of alcohol per minute, so that equates to 10ml of 10% wash per minute, 5ml of 20% etc. That gives a starting point for feed rate. Heat is delivered to the bottom of the stripping column as steam, so it could be reckoned in grams of steam per minute, but I have reckoned it in watts of power delivered to the column as specific latent heat of vaporisation of water. That's 2.26 kilojoules per gram, so 1 gram per second gives 2.26 kilowatts, and 443 micrograms per second, or 26.6 milligrams per minute, is 1 watt. So 100 watts is about 2.66 mils per minute. The power consumption by the flash boiler is a little higher than this because it also includes the heat necessary to raise the temperature of the incoming water from 10 degrees or so to 100 before boiling it and that specific heat capacity requirement adds about 17% to the specific latent heat that's delivered to the column. We're interested in high proof liquor so monitor the alcohol concentration of the product. There are risks in home distillation such as fire and methanol toxicity and so on, and there are also tragedies. Throwing alcohol down the drain is such a tragedy, and we want to keep that to a minimum. So we also monitor the alcohol concentration of the bottoms. In general, for a specific feed rate, increasing the power will reduce the alcohol content of both the bottoms and the product, and vice versa. The parameter of merit that we're after is not the product concentration per se, but the split. That is, the difference between the product and bottom concentrations. I do not yet have a satisfactory digital parrot system set up, but temperature measurements are a pretty good surrogate for control. The temperature of the bottom of the column is determined by how much alcohol there is in the bottoms, as that determines the boiling point of the liquid so we monitor it with a temperature sensor as close as it can be to the liquid phase in the bottom. I'm using one of these DS18B20 digital temperature sensors. They've got pretty good resolution but they're not precisely calibrated so we calibrate it before we start the process by running the still with steam only. After temperature stabilised with steam only we note the bottom temperature and we take that as our bottom sensor calibration temperature. We now need a target temperature for the bottoms in order to minimise alcohol losses. The closer that is to the calibration temperature, the lower the losses will be, and I have found that at about 0.3 degrees below the calibration temperature, bottoms are under about 0.1% alcohol, leading to an extraction rate of about 99% from 10% wash. This is the temperature profile I have measured from the same column running at 6.65 mils per minute of 14% wash when it was giving a split of 96.3%. You can see that the length of the part of the column that is around 78 degrees is 11 sensors or 1.1 meters. It needs to be at least 1 meter to get a split over 96%. This gives us another parameter to use for control. We take one of the temperature sensors towards the bottom of the isothermal section, I've used the tenth one here, and we aim to keep it under 79 degrees centigrade. So with these targets we can write a feedback control program on the Raspberry Pi to automatically adjust steam power. The adjustments we're going to make are small, and the heat capacity of the column is significant, so it's going to take a while for the adjustments to take effect. This means we do it fairly slowly. I make temperature measurements every two to five minutes and have a feedback system set up so that if the bottom's temperature fall below the target point, the power is increased by half a watt. 
And if the chosen column sensor, the tent one down in this case, rises above 79 degrees, the power is reduced by a fifth of a watt. This system allows you to maintain a high alcohol split over long periods of time, more effectively than using manual control of settings. The main reason being it automatically compensates for variations in heat loss from the column because of changes in environmental temperature. It also compensates for changes because of drift of flow from the pumps and therefore places much less stringent demands on pump performance. I'm using relatively inexpensive peristaltic pumps which are prone to drift and this system adequately compensates for that. When this is all set up it leaves you with one other parameter to adjust manually, wash feed flow rate and in this case you'll gradually increase it until you reach a point where the split falls below your target value of probably about 